Hello, everybody, and welcome. I'm Trisha Hirschberger, and we are coming to you live on the Newegg Studios channel for a look at some of the newest AMD motherboards to hit the market from our friends at ASUS. So joining me today to tell us everything we need to know, we have once again, JJ from ASUS. Welcome back, JJ. Happy to be here. Hi, thanks to everybody joining the stream. Yes, we are always happy to have you here. Thank you so much. Uh, at this point, regular channel viewers, have had the chance to get to know you quite well, I imagine, but for those who might be tuning in for the first time, please tell us what you do at ASUS and how does that relate to these new B550 boards that we're gonna be talking about today? Yeah, so I've uh, been with the company now for more than a decade. Um, you know, I've had a couple of different roles within the company. Right now, um, I support our marketing department and the capacity as a technical product marketing manager. And pretty much what that does is, um, you know, help to kind of coordinate within our team, provide more insight and information um, to have a better understanding of our products. So as we go into putting them out there into the marketplace, you know, hopefully we can keep a kind of mind's eye of what our community, our enthusiasts um, are kind of interested in, you know, what their wants and needs are. And then also at that same time, um, you know, being a, an advocate for their community, uh, relaying back that information back to our marketing team, as well as our product management and our engineering team so that, you know, we can keep designing the best products possible and maintain our position, you know, as that number one motherboard manufacturer in the world. So um, pretty exciting job. And of course, with an ASUS, with the wide range of hardware that we make, uh, means there's always a lot to be able to, to take a look at and also be able to talk about. Awesome. Well, we know that ASUS has a full lineup of B550 boards, and we're going to talk about a few highlights in more detail. But first, for people out there who might be considering a new B550 build, what should they know about this platform in general? Yeah, so um, I, I think this is a really interesting uh, platform. You know, if we take a look at, you know, the previous two kind of versions of it where we had B3, B350 and then B450, um, they were definitely looked at squarely as, I think, a kind of a mid-range based uh, or entry offering, right? Because there is a, a higher end chipset that is available in AMD's product portfolio with the X series. So that would be X470 previously or now currently X570. Um, but what we're really seeing with uh, B550, I think, is a, a great kind of balance in terms of the core specifications to be able to offer enthusiasts really kind of a great entry level of uh, feature set and specification, but also at the same time, a very high end level of feature set and specification. Um, this is really all about next generation specification. So when AMD introduced the latest generation of Ryzen 3000 series processor, Processors, you know, they were bringing about a lot of different aspects. They were bringing about, you know, even more cores, improved performance, um, high frequency DDR4, PCI Express Gen 4, uh, the latest USB uh, 3.2 specification. So all that was kind of coming along. And so when you bring that CPU, you pair that in with a chipset like we've got with B550, you're really getting a great foundation to be able to get a lot of those key next generation technologies. Awesome. And along with these next gen specifications, is Asus also focusing on bringing in other next gen specifications and technology? Talk to us more a little bit about that. Yeah, so as a motherboard manufacturer, you know, there's always a lot of different aspects to keep in mind when we go about, um, you know, the design and development of a, a motherboard lineup and kind of the key features that we're really trying to advocate. And so when we saw a lot of these next generation specifications being introduced, especially at, um, you know, this more entry level price point um, and positioning within the marketplace, we said, you know, this would be a great opportunity to also reinforce a lot of historic strengths that Asus is known for, especially in regards to kind of networking, audio technologies. And so here we see this as a great opportunity to bring 2.5 gigabit, which is a, a you know relatively new high performance Ethernet standard to replace the kind of the aging one gigabit Ethernet standard. Um, of course, you know we have long been known uh, as really an industry leader in Wi-Fi technologies with our wide range of routers as well as of course add-in adapters. And so here we were super excited to say, hey, let's push forward and you know um, we right now have really the most expense, extensive Wi-Fi 6 ecosystem when it comes to routers and so Wi-Fi 6 is going to be very common on a lot of the motherboards that we're going to be talking about and then there's other cool things that we're introducing uh, so we've been really uh, investing heavily in a lot of kind of smart dynamic uh, technologies when it comes to applications and so we've got AI noise canceling uh, as well as our AI first kind of center technologies and networking that we're also going to be touching on part of our ROG lineup so um, a lot of next gen specifications and kind of features uh, that even move beyond what AMD is bringing to the table with the CPU and the chipset. Awesome. Now, can you tell us a little bit more about how B550 compares to X570 and where it sits for users considering it their next build to be an AMD Ryzen build? Yeah, so um, this is, you know, really one of the most common, common questions that there, there's out there amongst kind of users when they're going about, you know, what's the right board to pick, um, you know, and on paper, most of the kind of the core experience elements are going to be very similar. So when you talk about supporting the latest generation of Ryzen 3000 series processors, that's check. 
Um, uh, of course, we are actively already supporting uh, in our base UEFI code, the latest generation of the XT series of CPUs from AMD Ryzen. And we're actually going to be coming out with a special enhanced UEFI firmware to even be able to offer uh, better performance and a better experience for XT series processors. Um, and of course, there's AMD's even next gen series processors, which are going to be supported on both X570 and B550. Um, so when we take a look at it from that perspective, things seem pretty similar. Overclocking is also fully capable both on the CPU and on the DRAM. So that also similar, PCI Express Gen 4, it's on both of its chipsets. Where you're going to see more of a division is going to be in a couple of areas. One is going to predominantly be in, I'd say, port count. So B550 is going to have a very rich level of connectivity, whether it's going to be, you know, NVMe, M.2 based storage, a core SATA 6G, USB 3.2, even optional Thunderbolt 3. Um, but if we take a look at, let's say, one of the boards, you might have say six to eight USB uh, ports on maybe a B550 board, where let's say on a high-end uh, X570 series board, you could see 10, 12, 14 ports. Um, same thing, you see more SATA ports, you're going to probably see dual LAN configurations. Um, there's also going to be more specialized technologies that might be built on for specialized enthusiast needs. So maybe people that are really interested in customized water cooling, um, audio enthusiasts that are even looking for higher caliber of audio might appreciate like the DAC technologies that we build on the higher end ROG boards. Um, but overall, when we just talk about the turnkey experience of getting something that's fast, stable, and reliable, both B550 and X570 are going to provide you a great experience. And we have, of course, a lineup that uh, is offering you an expansive level of choice, regardless of the chipset that you consider. Great. Well, that really helps to clear things up. Thank you for that. So with B550, can you let us know how many different motherboard series ASUS will be offering? Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we always have a big board lineup, and so it can be confusing for a lot of different people. But uh, we're going to be offering three different motherboard series for people that are going to be considering the B550 uh, series of motherboards. So we'll have um, our entry, uh, our prime series of motherboards. These aren't necessarily going to be focused at people that are, let's say, overclocking, but a great kind of turnkey experience, really focused at people that are looking for, you know, general productivity, everyday kind of systems, maybe some light gaming. Um, also, of course, content creation, whether that's audio uh, production, or maybe video editing, photo editing, things along those lines. They also have, of course, a little bit of a different stylized aesthetic because they've got white accents on the PCB. Um, and we're going to be offering multiple SKUs here as far as uh, both ATX and uh, micro ATX. And even the micro ATX will actually be offering Wi-Fi 6. So um, that is going to be in our Prime series. Moving into the gaming series, we're going to have our entry offering within the tough gaming bracket. And here we're going to offer four different models. And it'll be pretty easy to see in terms of that there'll be kind of essentially two models an ATX and a micro ATX. And the main difference uh, between the total of the four will be two versions will have Wi-Fi and two versions won't have Wi-Fi. Uh, but you're going to get a number of upgrades that we'll go a little bit more into when we get in the tough gaming series like 2.5 gigabit LAN, uh, tough gaming audio, and of course the inclusion of that Wi-Fi 6. And last but not least, of course, we've got our Hero series, uh, which are ROG Strix. So these are really going to kind of be tailored towards those enthusiasts that are looking for a really, really well spec uh, enthusiast centered board. So, you know, gamers, of course, first and foremost is really the target, uh, streamers, um, really, and of course, I think also users that have just, um, you know, an interest in having something that aesthetically kind of takes it to the next bracket, as, you know, we're going to offer kind of the most, I think, extensive type of designs when it comes to the aesthetic PCB layout. Um, the colors, of course, the RGB lighting and connectivity is going to be the highest end on the Strix, along with a lot of other areas that we've improved upon uh, compared to the Tough Gaming and the Prime series. But a total of three different series, and pretty much also all form factors will be covered here, uh, where we're going to have a board, whether it's going to be an ATX, Micro ATX, or Mini ATX, they will be those respective boards within the different series. So JJ, I know you just kind of touched on this, but just to give it the high level overview, there's three series in total and how many actual boards will there be and which form factors are going to be available? Yep. Uh, so for Prime Series, we're going to have four motherboards and the Prime will uh, offer ATX and Micro ATX. Uh, for Tough Gaming, we're going to be offering also four SKUs and that will be in ATX and Micro ATX. And remember there, uh, essentially, they're going to be pretty much the same exact models but two will have Wi-Fi and two won't have Wi-Fi with the rest of the specifications pretty much being identical. And then for the ROG Strix series, we'll have five motherboards. Here, the focus will be on ATX and then mini ITX, no micro ATX. Uh, so if you're interested in micro ATX, make sure to check out either Prime or Tough Gaming. Um, but I also do kind of call out that specifically for the ROG Strix, um, alongside that Dash I, we're also going to be introducing a brand new Dash A SKU uh, for the ROG Strix lineup. 
Cool. So it sounds like there's a board for just about every type of user out there. And as a reminder to everyone who's watching at home right now, many of these boards are available on Newegg right now or will be coming very soon. So make sure that you check out the links below this video to head on over to browse for yourself. Um, so let's get into some of the new items that you have. What are some of the improvements you have on your B550 boards in general? So I think, you know, when we compare this to the last generation uh, with B450, um, and also it's important, I think, to keep in mind that not even just comparison to B450, because for the vast majority of users, they're not upgrading gener generation to generation. Most of the people that are probably going to be considering building a system are coming from uh, a system that might be, you know, three, four years old. So in many ways, there's going to be significant improvements across the board. But here for just kind of general contrast, we're making a comparison to the previous B450 options that were available. Um, but for many of you that are either going to be a first time builder or going to be coming from you know, builds from a few years ago, many of these things are going to be considerably improved upon from what you might have had. Um, but our big, our big focus, I think, here was that we saw, of course, the core count heavily increase um, on AMD's side to be able to really offer um, you know, the fact that you're moving into eight cores, 12 cores, uh, you know, uh, 16 that's a lot of uh, cores that you have to handle, a lot of threads that you have to handle. And so power delivery was a key area along with thermal dissipation. So for the vast majority of our boards, we've shifted over to uh, digital power stages that are built onto the motherboards. So that's gonna be present across all tough gaming and all ROG strict SKUs. Uh, we also carefully evaluated, I think, thermals um, because when you're talking about these higher core count CPUs, you're pacing them under more load, you wanna be able to ensure stable and reliable operations. So, you know, we carefully looked at aspects like the VRM heat sinks on the motherboard to be able to ensure, you know, stable and reliable operation. And those for those users that are looking to maximize performance, takes things further, um, you know, and overclocking, make sure that, you know, within the respective board lineups that we also um, ensure that that was a positive experience. And then of course we touched on some of these other elements like, you know, focusing on a lot of these next generation specification improvements like adding in support for Thunderbolt 3 on many of the boards with a Thunderbolt 3 header, the 2.5 gigabit LAN, uh, the Wi-Fi 6, but then also some other things that sometimes don't necessarily always, uh, I think, get talked about, which is going to be within the UEFI BIOS. Um, you know, we've long been known, I think, within the industry of offering a UEFI BIOS that um, is really well laid out. The usability is extremely uh, strong, and uh, the underlying interoperability, compatibility, and performance is really kind of at at the forefront of the industry. And that's really important because uh, without a really strong UEFI firmware environment, it doesn't matter how good the PCB board design is or the power components or the rest of what you do on the motherboard side, it needs to be backed up with a really, really good quality UEFI experience. And I think in that regard, we've consistently shown from generation to generation, especially on these AMD boards that you know we have a great experience. So can you give us a little bit more information on some of the new options that you've built into the UEFI BIOS on your B550 boards? Yeah, uh, so we actually have a few uh, brand new options and some that we've recently introduced on some of the boards in the last couple of generations. So let's first talk about some ones that are specific to B550. Uh, the first one is going to be our ASUS Performance Enhancement Technology. Um, so this is going to be what we call internally, and we're also now kind of putting out there is ASUS APE, A-P-E. Um, so this is an option that's available within the UEFI BIOS. We actually just released this UEFI about a week ago, so um, it is available publicly for users to be able to download. And once they essentially download it, um, it's a, just a quick toggle within the UEFI environment. When they toggle this, we'll essentially make adjustments to three key parameters of what's referred to as PBO within um, essentially the operating characteristics of the CPU. Now, this is different than overclocking because we're not manually adjusting the voltage that's being supplied. We're not uh, changing the multipliers or the ratios. Our goal is essentially to help to maximize the power, the current, and other operating parameters uh, for the CPU to work in conjunction specifically with the way that we've designed the motherboard. And what I mean by the motherboard is going to be the power components in the VRM assembly. Um, so instead of using the baseline uh, specification guidance from AMD, we know that on boards where we have higher quality power delivery and we have more thermal headroom because of the VRM design and the thermal solution, we can essentially help to ensure a higher level of performance. Um, now, this isn't going to benefit you in, I'd say, lightly threaded workloads. Um, so in applications that are generally using only a few threads, but if you're using a certain game, so like Total War Take, for instance, uses a lot of cores, or of course, any type of content creation centric application, or anything that's heavily utilizing cores and on these higher core count CPUs uh, in the Ryzen family lineup, then you can help to extend the performance of that part um, without having to essentially think about anything. So if you're just somebody that wants to 
get better performance out of your, uh, your, your CPU by pairing it because you've got an ASUS motherboard and you've got a good cooling solution, then you can do that just by toggling this ASUS Ape. And this is going to be available on all three of the motherboards, the Prime Series, the Tough Gaming Series, and the ROG Strix Series. The next feature is going to be also one that doesn't get talked about a lot um, amongst the community because sometimes there's kind of, I'd say, old myths or old perceptions on how to correctly overclock a system uh, or what might actually be maybe the easiest approach to overclocking. And that's what we refer to as an all core synced overclock. So as an example, if you have a processor and let's say just as a reference, it's running at you know four gigahertz and I want to overclock it to 4.2. Traditionally, what I might do is try to set my overclock of 4.2 across all eight cores um, or all 12 cores, whatever it might be for the configuration of the CPU. The disadvantage that you have is, especially as you get to CPUs that have higher and higher core counts, is, is that, especially with AMD's architecture where they have these chiplet-based designs, um, some portions may not readily be able to run at that higher frequency. A great way to kind of think about this might be like your left arm and your right arm. Um, a lot of people that are predominantly, let's say, right-handed have more strength in their, in their right arm. So they'll be able to lift a heavier bag, you know, maybe let's say 25 pounds here. But if I go to my left, maybe only 15 pounds. So it wouldn't make sense to force both hands to hold the equal amount of weight. Um, and that's actually what a per core CCX option is available. This used to only be available exclusively within the Ryzen master utility in the operating system. But we've now exposed this option directly to users inside the UEFI BIOS. So they can go in there and they can have more control to let's say, okay, I want one of the CCXs to go to let's say 4.3 or 4.4, and then the other CCX to be able to go to a little bit lower frequency. That way I can try to maximize um, the, the overall kind of dynamic nature of how the CPU works in terms of that not all the cores might be able to get to that one frequency. It's a very impressive feature. And again, uh, this takes resource and time and effort. And it's one of those things that you're not gonna easily be able to see on the specification page when you're picking the motherboard, but it's one of those great value adds you get when you get an ASUS motherboard. Uh, the last two options that I want to touch on are going to be updating um, the, the UEFI BIOS. So there's always a lot of discussion amongst people in the community about updating their UEFI. And uh, you know we've always strived to try to make this process easier. So uh, a couple of generations ago, we actually integrated the UEFI updating process straight into the UEFI. In the past, what you would normally have to do is either get your system entirely built uh, and then install everything, install the drivers, download it, and then flash your, your motherboard or you'd have to have a second system and then download the file, put it to a flash drive, uh, connect it to the motherboard and flash it. Um, we've made now much simpler. So essentially all the user needs to do is just take an ethernet cable, connect it to the ethernet port on the motherboard. And as long as they have an active internet connection uh, for that ethernet cable, when they go in the UEFI, once they've you know, got their base system set up, um, essentially no windows installed or anything, they can just go in the UEFI and click the update button. And it'll connect to our server. It'll tell you, hey, there's a new update available. They can download it and that way they can guess get the best interoperability, compatibility, and performance right from the very beginning, helping to minimize any type of uh, you know, compatibility, interoperability, and making sure they're getting the best performance right from the very beginning. So super, super excited about having that option be available on so many of the boards. Um, the last one is going to be DRAM. Uh, a lot of sometimes users have questions around like making sure, how do I make sure to get the best experience from uh, my motherboard when I'm buying this kit of memory from Newegg. So they've got this promo about like this 3600 kit of memory, but the motherboard says that it only runs like at 3200, or I put it in and it's only running at 2400. And we've made this process much, much simpler for people. So all they need to do is again, go into our UEFI BIOS. We have something that's called DOCP. It's a little toggle. It will read the frequency, the voltage, and the timings for the memory that they've purchased and uh, attempt to automatically apply that to the motherboard so the user doesn't have to go in and manually put in the frequency, the timing, and the voltage, um, and you're good to go. And for the vast majority of users, that's probably going to be speeds between 3,200 to 36 to 37, 33 in terms of the frequencies. All those are supported on every single one of these boards without issue and even higher. Um, but it's just a great, simple, easy way uh, across all these boards to, I think, get a better experience from our uh, UEFI BIOS. Awesome. As someone who just upgraded the RAM in her streaming PC and had to mess around with DRAM XMP, thank you for making that process a little bit easier for everyone. Um, so talking about these features in particular, what kind of cons consumer do you see these appealing to? Yeah, so I think B550 is a really uh, great 
uh, foundation for pretty much just about any type of user. So I think the vast majority, probably people checking out the stream, are probably going to fall into that kind of that gaming camp. They're going to be building a system, whether it's to play something like Children of Morta or maybe the remaster of Command and Conquer to, you know, of course, The Witcher 3 or maybe, you know, Fortnite. It doesn't really matter, but they're falling into probably the gaming camp. At the same time, uh, we've got boards and specifications that are really well suited to complementing any type of user. So whether you're, like I said, looking for advanced productivity, content creation, uh, or kind of a, a hybrid situation, situation in terms of your build, um, the boards uh, are going to work equally well for any one of those scenarios. Awesome. So now let's go ahead and jump into talking about the specific motherboards. Let's talk about one of the Prime boards, the Prime B550MA Wi-Fi. Tell me about that. Yeah, so that's actually this board right here that I've got uh, on the table. And so uh, traditionally, you know, micro ATX isn't something that always gets focused on, but I think we're seeing that uh, with a trend of getting to more compact chassis that are on the market, um, you know, users are sometimes looking for um, maybe a little, something a little bit smaller in terms of the board. And uh, with the Prime series, like I said, the first thing you're going to notice off the bat is going to be its generalized aesthetic. Um, it has white accents on the PCB, silver. So it's got a little bit of, I think, a fresh kind of bright feel to it and looks a little bit different than what you would have in our more dark monochrome series of motherboards like in Tough Gaming or RG Strix. Um, on this one, of course, you're going to have full ready support available for that entire Ryzen 3000 series of processors. You still get the dual M.2. You still get your Wi-Fi 6 built on board. Um, you're also going to have our Crystal Sound 3 isolated audio design. So that's something that we originally only had on, like, on high-end ROG-based motherboards, but it still helps to get improvement in terms of music, videos, and games. You're going to have that built on board. And of course, you've got you know, your USB 3.0 Gen 2. And we also have some nice, I think, easy turnkey experiences. These boards aren't really focused, I'd say, at the overclocking segment of the market, um, even in the ATX version. Uh, which we have an ATX version for the Prime board on B550. Um, but, you know, when it comes to just being able to drop in that processor, you know, Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, enable the DOCP profile for the memory, you're going to be good to go. But we also have some things like our Q technologies, which are quick technologies to make things simpler, like single-sided latches for the memory to make it simpler to install, um, the QLED diagnostic system, which will help you to go ahead and quickly debug your system if you've got an issue with the CPU or the DRAM, the graphics card or the boot device, a little LED will light up to help to give you insight into that. And of course, all those different options that we talked about in the UEFI are still going to be present on a board like this. Uh, uh, a very, I think, solid and turnkey option for a lot of users that are out there, especially I think for maybe those more users that aren't necessarily looking at gaming and just looking for a turnkey system for advanced productivity or content creation, or like I said, maybe a different aesthetic when it comes to their gaming build. Awesome. Yeah, the aesthetic's really interesting. I like it a lot. Um, so with Prime covered, what about some more gaming focused boards? Talk to me about tough gaming. Yeah, so we've got Tough Gaming as well here. And so Tough Gaming is usually pretty easy to see because there's a couple of differences right off the bat in terms of the aesthetic. It's our entry into the Asus gaming product portfolio. Um, and what we mean by kind of the entry isn't necessarily that you're getting a low-end product. Our focus is just to um, try to balance out the specifications to be able to align with the lower price point, but still be able to offer you something that's stable and reliable and also has a, a gaming inherent focus. And what we mean by gaming inherent focus is one is going to be the aesthetics. It's got, a, I think, a really cool distinctive design We've got digital camo print on the board, predominantly monochrome, but we have a little bit of that tough gaming uh, yellow gold accent uh, color there just to be able to add a little bit of a differentiation to it. And then, of course, we also focus on really elevating aspects like the audio and the networking experience, which are going to kind of be key points uh, for a lot of PC DIY gamers. So here, as I noted earlier, we've got four different motherboards, ATX and MicroATX. The big upgrades that you're going to have compared to the Prime, I think, are first and foremost going to be in the networking. So on Prime, where we saw that we had traditional one gigabit Ethernet standard, on the Tough Gaming boards, you're going to move up to the 2.5 gigabit Ethernet standard. This will be Realtek's 2.5 gigabits. Uh, and we're also actually going to have some pretty cool software that we'll talk about here in a moment. Um, but alongside with that 2.5 gigabit, we've also upgraded uh, the audio solution. So as paired to, let's say, the Realtek isolated audio, the 8, uh, 800 series that we're using on the Prime, we move up to the ALC 1200. So you get a better audio codec, you get better networking, and then also power delivery. On all the Tough Gaming series, we move up to power stages. Uh, power stages are going to just be more efficient, and they're going to be higher performing. Uh, at a minimum, it's going to at least be eight power stages on the motherboard. And we also have very large extended heat sinks. And so to make sure that you're getting stool, uh, cool and stable, uh, reliable operation under load. Um, something we also introduced a couple of generations ago is the heat sink design is what we call a dual contact heat sink, uh, heat sink design. So that means the actual heat sink itself 
um, on, the, on the motherboard, when it makes contact with the VRM, there's actually two portions that it makes contact with, what's called the power stages, but also the inductors of the chokes. So we're helping to just maximize and pull away more heat uh, from the motherboard. Um, beyond that, um, you know, the, the other big focus, like I said, is going to be in the software area where we've added in our Turboland software and then a DTS audio suite. Awesome. Well, let me bring up uh, an example of that audio suite so that you can tell us a little bit more about it. Here we go. What are we looking yeah. at? Uh, so the first thing here is going to be with the DTS Audio Suite. So this is a specialized package that we work with DTS on where essentially you have just three different profiles that are available to you that are tailored to different types of game experiences. So an FPS might be as an example like we have there in the clip with uh, Overwatch, where you can just go ahead and quickly toggle that. It adds a little bit more immersion and kind of precision. And you also have an EQ that allows you to make adjustments to it. Um, so that is a nice option that's available. And again, that's on all the tough gaming boards. Um, beyond that, uh, when we get to the networking side, we have our Turboland software. So the Turboland software, which I think, yeah, we've got a clip of as well, is going to be a packet priority software. And essentially just what that means is that it's software that helps to analyze the packets for whatever you might have running on your system. And so as our example, in something like, let's say, Apex Legends, when you actually load up, the uh, Turboland software, you have the ability to, let's say, prioritize that. So if you've got other things maybe running in the background and you want to make sure that that's getting the preferred essentially recognition with the operating system so you can help to ensure a lower ping and better latency, all you have to do is dynamically click, toggle it up, and you're good to go. So the great thing is, like I said, that works on all of the tough gaming boards, and it also works on both wired and wireless connections. Very, very cool. All right, well, those... Uh, oh, go ahead, so anything else about the tough too, boards? Uh, yeah, I wanted to touch on on the tough board is that those boards also do come with our USB BIOS flashback technology. So that is something that we first pioneered and innovated and introduced on ROG motherboards, but we've now are offering on the tough gaming lineup. And this is going to think be very beneficial in the future for those of you that might be considering maybe unreleased CPUs at a later date. If you have a current CPU, the USB BIOS flashback technology will allow you to update the UEFI BIOS um, even without the, the CPU, the DRAM. Uh, the graphics card installed. You just need to connect the power supply, put in a flash drive, and you can low-level update the board. So uh, there are tough gaming models that have the USB BIOS flashback feature. That's awesome. All right. Well, uh, those tough gaming boards look fantastic. So for the more demanding enthusiasts and those who are really looking for an elevated aesthetic, you guys, of course, have your ROG Strix series as your highest end offering for B550. Tell us about Strix. Yeah. So, um, you know, ROG Strix is really a kind of our sweet spot enthusiast line where our goal there is to be able to offer, I think, inherently something that across the board is going to be improved in every single way compared to our tough gaming. So power delivery is upgraded. Networking is upgraded. Audio is network upgraded. Uh, the fan connectivity and control is upgraded. Uh, the UE5 BIOS is more going to be more feature rich. So in every single way, you're going to get an upgraded board. Um, and here we've got a pretty extensive lineup in terms of what we're going to be offering with, like I said, the highest end version being our Dash E. Uh, followed up by the Dash F, where we'll have a Wi-Fi, non-Wi-Fi version. We're also going to be introducing a Dash A SKU. Um, the Dash A SKU is going to be really cool because it's an entirely new aesthetic that we're going to have for the motherboard, where we're going to have silver and white for an ROG-based motherboard. Um, and then uh, we're also going to be offering the Dash I, which would be great for those people that are looking for a high-end, small form factor gaming build. But in terms of what we've done, I think, in, um, in regards to the overall uh, kind of upgrades is the key areas that you're really going to be looking at are going to be in terms of usability and then in terms of performance. So the VRM is going to be considerably upgraded and uh, we're also going to be using even higher end power stages with boards starting up from 12 power stages on the ATX all the way up to 14. Um, the Dash I will have eight. And then from there, the heat sinks even being larger, still maintaining that dual contact based design. And then we're going to be upgrading some other things like integrated IO shield, audio network that we're going to touch on here. But I do think actually we have an image of the Dash A, if we can show that, uh, that whiteboard, just so people can kind of take a look at it, because it's something that we're super excited about. Now, this board isn't yet available. Many of the other boards are available right now. And if they're out of stock on Newegg for B550, don't worry, we've got more coming in literally uh, in the coming week. Uh, so you can get your Asus B550 board. But um, I think the B550-A is going to be a super popular SKU. It's going to be priced right around the same price as the Dash F non-Wi-Fi spec, very similar. Um, but I think the really cool thing is going to be also the aesthetic, right? This aesthetic perfectly complements our new kind of line of white accessories that we have. So we've got Strix LC coolers in whites, Strix power supply 
supplies in white. We'll have some new chassis in our Tough Gaming lineup in white, along with our Helios chassis and kind of a silver and white, and even certain of our purples in white. So we're trying to really be able to offer users that great balance of like saying, hey, if you want to go with kind of a bold and bright configuration, or you want to go with a really clean, stealth, kind of matted out direction, we've got an RG Strix board for you. Yeah, it's definitely a different aesthetic than I think what uh, what Asus ROG fans might be used to. Um, but I love it. I think it's a great looking board. And with the white and the silver, then you're also going to get a lot more reflection and pop from all of the RGB lighting that you might want to put in there. Uh, so that's it. really and, cool. I like and, that a lot. Uh, yeah, that's going to be actually one of the key areas. You know, we so we talked about that. Uh, you of course get the upgraded power componentry in terms of the VRM, right? You get the integrated IO shield, which is just a huge time saver. Helps to also improve elements of electrostatic discharge and EMI. Um, but uh, the RGB connectivity is also going to be the most extensive here, with the boards generally having either three headers, if not four headers, on the motherboard, except for the Mini ITX course, which is a smaller form factor board. You're also going to have integrated onboard lighting that's going to be a little bit more prominent there, um, along with even something that's subtle. You won't necessarily see it until you kind of take a closer look at the picture, you get the board in hand. But even compared to our B450, we went with a more matte black PCB uh, stylized uh, texture on the motherboard. So it's got a, a very kind of clean silhouette to it, where you still also have the minimal cyber text finishing and some nice accents with what we call our electro punk uh, finish. Um, <laughs> and you'll see that a little bit on the dashy and the dash F where they've got a little bit of this kind of pink highlight there. Um, but it also uh, it doesn't really contend or compete with the look and feel of your build, uh, but the other cool part is that it also is complementary to a new line of products that we just launched with our Electropunk gaming series of peripherals, uh, where we've got things like keyboards and mice and headsets uh, that also have this kind of ex uh, accent color. But um, moving back, I think, into some of the kind of key areas that I think a lot of users are really appreciate and wonder about the difference, again, between Tough Gaming and RG Strix, it's going to be in the audio networking side. So on the audio side, we're, uh, the Tough Gaming had the ALC 1200. Here we're going to be moving up to the ALC 1220, or what we refer to as our Supreme Effects audio design. So this is a higher performing codec in every way. It's going to have um, you know, lower total harmonic distortion, better tonality, um, more dynamic range. So it's just going to be sharper, clearer, and overall better audio experience. There's also dual operational amplifiers. What that really just means is that um, you're going to have essentially a punched up level of kind of sound stage and volume. So when you connect your headphones, you'll notice notably that it's a louder experience and it's uh, essentially easier to drive a more dynamic range of headphones. Now for users that might have still really, really demanding high end, high end, high impedance or uh, you know, specialized sensitivity headphones, you still might need like an outboard DAC or something like that. But for the vast majority of users out there that are using headsets and headphones, you get a very, very good audio experience from this S2-1220 Supreme Effects audio codec with those dual op amps, audio grade capacitors. Um, we've also got our Sonic Studio software suite, uh, which is a very extensive suite uh, that allows for a lot of customization in terms of the audio experience. This get, kind of gets overlooked a lot of times because sometimes people are just looking at kind of the hardware spec, but there's a lot of options for the user to be able to go in here where they can customize the audio in multiple ways. If they want to adjust you know, everything from you know, bass to treble to add virtual surround, they can do that. We also intelligently allow for mapping between different applications. So if you want a different kind of audio experience for your web browser between the game that you might be playing to, let's say, you know, your Spotify desktop client, you can do that. You can dynamically set different profiles for different audio experiences with different configurations for every single application. Uh, we also have advanced options in terms of noise post-processing. And new for this generation, and it is present on the other boards as well, but it's going to be our ASUS AI noise canceling technology. So. This is really advanced. We essentially use advanced machine learning and algorithms to analyze a lot of waveform information for ambient noise. And then when essentially we're detecting uh, the range of the human voice, we can help to filter a lot of that noise out. And the great thing here is that it's not contingent on a specific GPU or a specific type of configuration or even a specific type of microphone. It doesn't matter whether you use a USB mic or you're using uh, an analog-based microphone or a headset microphone, it can work. You just essentially turn on ASUS AI noise canceling and you can help to uh, you know, provide a cleaner and overall better uh, dialogue experience when you're either chatting with your friends online or you're of course uh, doing something competitively you know, with your teams uh, and other players online as well. Now on the networking side, uh, we've taken what we offered in terms of that Turbulent software and we've kind of gone to 10. Uh, this is our uh, AI networking technology that works in conjunction with the Wi-Fi 6 or the 2.5 gigabit LAN that the RG Strix boards have. Here we're going to be going up from Realtek to Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, so you get a better performing network controller. 
Um, but the software is also really the, kind of the big distinguishing point. Um, Game for Six offers a huge amount of options, and we'll be able to kind of show you a little bit of software, but Game for Six has been entirely rewritten from the ground up. Extremely uh, lean code base, so you, it's lightweight, doesn't use a lot of system resources, but it's extremely intelligent. There's actually a cloud backend that's built into this, where the moment that we actually see that an application is launched, we can detect that application or that service and then automatically prioritize it. So if you're launching Steam, if you're launching, launching Epic or you're launching Origin, doesn't matter, um, or you're launching the game, we'll prioritize that engine and make sure that that's at the forefront. And this all automatically is real-time updated. So the great thing is that even if these new games are coming out or patches are occurring, we're uh, consistently monitoring that. And of course, if you want to be able to control any of this, you can do it yourself within the application, but it's great that that kind of is built in. Um, a kind of a little bit more underlying aspect that some people might not realize is that we're also doing power management profiling based on the game or the application. So on AMD, they've done a lot of really advanced things when it comes to different types of what are called power profiles. So when you install your chipset drivers and software, AMD actually has different profiles that have the processor operate differently for different kind of peak levels of performance. And we actually automatically switch the system into AMD Ryzen high performance mode the moment that the game is launched. Um, so again, there's a lot of intelligence that's going on here and a lot of usability that's also available to you, even with things like now a built-in uh, monitor, which will check things like temperatures and um, memory utilization and a lot more. So a very, very rich piece of software. And again, uh, just like the Turbo LAN on the Tef Gaming Board, it works on both your wired and your wireless connections. Love it. Well, it sounds like whether you're going Ryzen 5, 7, or 9, Asus has the right board for you. Yeah, um, you know, I think we've spent a lot of time and effort to really be able to offer a, a great experience. Um, you know, for me, positioning wise, I think um, if you take a look at something like our Prime B550 series, I think really, really great choice for a Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5. Even if you want to maybe consider like Ryzen 7, you could go that route. But I think uh, when you start to go into the higher end Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, you definitely want to take a look at the Tough Gaming line. And then when you're probably in that uh, again, it could be Ryzen 5, Ryzen 7, or right even Ryzen 9, then definitely be taking a look at the RG Strix series. And we lastly didn't touch on it there on the RG Strix, but as a whole, um, you know, one thing to keep in mind is that for anybody that's interested in RGB, all the boards have RGB support in terms of Asus or a Sync. And we actually have uh, brand new versions of our kind of software that if you haven't looked at our software recently, we used to offer a standalone or application, but it's now all under our Armory Crate software. So this has kind of made the experience, I think, more streamlined and easier to be able to manage manage that um, you can actually download the drivers directly from with Armory Crate. You can update the UEFI within Armory Crate. You can synchronize your devices and control your RGB lighting all within the Armory Crate software. And so whether it's the Prime, the Tough Gaming, or uh, the RG Strix, they all have access to that Armory Crate software. And it's also something that we're actively working on. And uh, we also have uh, continued to do some other updates that for those of you that are going to be doing those really crazy RGB builds, we do have our new Aura Creator software which actually also allows for some much more dynamic, I'd say, um, kind of sequential based RGB lighting patterns. So as opposed to just kind of standard presets or color control, you can actually go in and tailor, very similar to kind of a nonlinear editor where you can pick the devices, set up their position in terms of where the RGB lighting is going to be coming from, um, you know, sequencing and speeds and all those different things. And it's something you're going to continue seeing updates from us over this uh, next year for both Armory Crate and Aura Creator. Awesome. Now I'm going to be pulling some questions from chat in just a moment. So anyone who's watching this right now, if you have any questions, please go ahead and toss them into chat. But uh, JJ, while we're waiting for some questions to come in, mm -hmm. you guys are running a campaign for the B550 series of motherboards, correct? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, for sure. We're actually running a couple of different campaigns. So uh, first and foremost is going to be one that we've got for a $100 game code voucher. So um, the great thing about it, essentially, all you have to do is just type in ACUS B550 into a search engine. It will take you to our landing page website. Um, and it pretty much is just asking you to hey, utilize the ta hashtag ACUS B550, um, you know, add us on our different social media channels, um, help to post your builds, you know, to PC Part Picker, to Reddit, um, builds.gg, different types of communities that we have available to be able to show off uh, the awesome things you guys are doing uh, so that you can go ahead and get qualified for this $100 game code voucher. Um, now, this one's going to be running for just a little bit of a, I'd say, a shorter period of time. It's going to be ending in about a week and a half or so. You can check the specific dates uh, on the actual page. But we're also going to be running a much longer promotion, the ACUS B550 uh, campaign, where same thing, though, utilize that uh, ACUS 
B550 hashtag, um, upload your builds along with a little bit of information about a sentence about your build experience, uh, whether it's going to be with Prime, Tough Gaming, uh, with ROG Strix, and there's going to be an opportunity to win a huge um, kind of system where we've got a huge amount of pricing that's going to be available to you be able to win. And if you've already purchased a B550 board, for one, thank you guys so much for supporting us, uh, but you already qualify too. So it uh, doesn't matter whether you're going to be getting a board or whether you've already purchased a B550 board. If you got in that first initial launch allotment, um, you can go ahead and enter into this. And I also want to make note that uh, make sure to check out our brand new PC DIY Facebook group. You know, we're uh, giving insights and recommendations. We're letting people know about the newest releases of the software and the UFIs as they come out, providing tweaks and tuning tips uh, to getting your system kind of up and running and a whole lot more, as well as being able to have access to information as uh, new hardware comes out. We're going to be posting it there in our community. So you can check out um, all those contests and campaigns, as well as the group, as well as our Edge Up website um, down in the description. OK, great. And I've got a bunch of questions coming in from chat. So let's start with my name's nobody says, why is the B550 ROG Strix Mini ITX so closely positioned to the X570 version of the same board and so far from the other B550 Mini ITX boards? Would you say this is the case, JJ? And if so, what is the reasoning or is this kind of a misconception? Um, you know, the, it's it's I think that's a little tricky because for X570, right, we actually have uh, a couple of different options, right? So we have a Strix and then we have also the Crosshair Impact, so really high end uh, DTX version of the motherboard. Um, but, you know, this board, I think we purpose built that we knew that there's a huge amount of interest uh, for people to have a high performing mini ITX board. And the Dash I, you know, which goes back to multiple generations, has really become a benchmark amongst the community where people want high level of performance. So our goal here was to really make sure that it didn't feel compromised. In fact, you know, we just set world record performance on this board over six gigahertz in terms of the DRAM overclocking, um, really impressive CPU overclocking with a Ryzen 5 CPU in that uh, configuration. Um, and, you know, a lot of kind of specialized design attributes like our, our specialized riser card for the audio solution that we have on board, uh, the M.2 base configuration, um, the active cooling that we have on that VRM, um, you know, all those things. Our goal is definitely, I think, within the Dash I series to make sure that you feel like you're getting a Dash F, but in a mini ITX board, right? And so it's, I think, not not done from the perspective of trying to overspec the board, but just try to make sure that when a user goes, especially within a smaller form factor system, because there's kind of less to, less to um, hide against in terms of the board, especially when you're going into a more cramped situation, you really want to be able to make sure that it's stable and reliable and is going to afford the level of performance uh, that a user is expecting. Awesome. I've got another one here from uh, Jay's Beers. It says, what boards have all M.2 slots running at 4.0? Uh, that's going to be pretty much all the boards, right? Uh, B550, a key hallmark feature is going to be PCI Gen 4. The main difference you're going to find is that the vast majority of pretty much all these boards are going to have dual M.2, but depending on the motherboard, the layout, right, most of them, the primary M.2 one slot, let's say, is going to be a PCI Gen 4, and then that secondary slot would be maybe uh, what's called tied into the chipset, which is only going to be PCI Gen 3. Uh, and that's going to be kind of that difference between X570 and B550. So if you really feel that situation where you want to be able to run dual uh, PCI Gen 4 based storage devices, then that's where X570 makes more sense as opposed to in B550, it's really targeted for users that are going to be looking more so for a single PCI Gen 4 based SSD and of course their high performance GPU. Awesome. Thank you for your question. Um, I got two questions here from chat that kind of go hand in hand. So I'm going to ask them together and then let you run wild with it, JJ. But Cookie mm -hmm. Camo 24 says, is the lighting cross compatible with the GPU, RAM cards, mouse, and et cetera, if you don't buy the same brand of stuff? And then Game Crate asked, do these boards support the Asus Corsair RGB integration that we saw at CES? Yeah, so a couple of great questions. So let's first answer the, I'd say, kind of uh, RGB ecosystem. So, um, you know, Asus Aura Sync is actually the first company that came out there to implement an RGB standard on motherboards. And then from there, we're the first to actively put out an open SDK. Um, the fact that we have an open SDK, we've tried to open that to as many partners as possible. We actually have the biggest ecosystem. So, you know, thankfully, that doesn't just mean our own products, like our own coolers and our own, you know, um, graphics cards. Um, we also have a great range of partners, you know, Thermaltake, Corsair, Fantex, um, you know, many, many partners. 
um, that all offer RGB compatible devices. Um, DRAM is going to be pretty much across the board. Pretty much any kit that you're going to buy that's RGB is going to be compatible with Asus Aura Sync in terms of the control. Graphics cards, it is going to be exclusive to Asus-based graphics cards. It won't work with another manufacturer-based graphics card. In most of the situations, they would probably have their own utility where you'd have to set that. But that's the advantage you would have with kind of an Asus Aura Sync ecosystem is if you get any Asus or a sync enabled item, as long as it has that ASUS or a sync on there, you know that you can essentially control it and synchronize it all through that Armory Crate configuration. Um, in relation to the Corsair function, yes, we have um, essentially uh, worked with Corsair to allow their IQ to have access to that open SDK. Um, it is ultimately still up to them in terms of how they manage. Uh, working within the components, but as of right now, at least for basic control, as long as you have the Aura uh, software installed and you enable that option with IQ, you do have management options so that if you want to have kind of a Corsair RGB ecosystem, um, you can have that be synchronized and control within an ASUS motherboard configuration. Um, there are other partners that also offer similar configurations. Thermaltake does that, and it doesn't actually have to require they're a separate utility from them. You can add, you can do it all inclusively through Asus Aura Sync, as well as like Cooler Master or Fantex um, have similar kind of ecosystems that we fully support. Awesome, great questions. Thank you so much, and thank you JJ for your answer. And I know that we're coming to kind of the end of our time here. So JJ, as always, thank you so much for joining us and sharing all of this useful information to help people figure out which Asus B550 board might be right for them. Thank you. Yeah, no, as always, it's been awesome. I want to thank you as well for being a fantastic host and uh, allowing me to talk about these boards. And to everybody that's out there in the community, if you definitely have more questions, like I said, make sure to go ahead and follow us up on our social media channels or make sure to go ahead and join that uh, PCDIY Facebook group that we have linked in the description. Um, I spend a lot of time in there on a daily basis to be able to make sure to give you guys inside information on anything that might be related to our entire range of PCDIY hardware. So motherboards, graphics cards, chassis, coolers, Whatever we've got, um, you can definitely find out more information there. Perfect. And I think we have some links in the description pointing people to the ASUS EdgeUp website as well. Yeah. So our EdgeUp website is also a great resource that we have available. So this is actually a site that we own and develop and we put content on. And we have two really great sources uh, right now for B550 builders out there. One is going to be a full motherboards buying guide. Um, so it kind of gives you all the ins and outs on a lot of things that we've covered in this live stream. But of course, in kind of that friendlier format of kind of web-based interface where you can look at everything, look at the specs, kind of compare and contrast. And then we also have a full buyer's guide. So if you're interested in kind of building an ASUS or enabled system uh, with ASUS components, we have full guide configurations that are broken down for you there as well. Awesome. So for everybody there watching at home, uh, please click the links below this live stream to head over to Newegg.com to check out all of the ASUS B550 motherboards, including the ones that we highlighted today in detail. Some are available now, and again, some will be coming very soon. So for Newegg Studios, this is Trisha Hirschberger, and I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye.